strange, strange things. Okay, How We Love Christmas Music. The folk tune adapted to... Uh-oh, that's, that's about gone here. What's... I don't know if you can still see me, hear me. Anyway, the folk tune adapted to sacred theme has come to be called the Christmas Carol. And it only serves to put us in a Christmas spirit mood. I used to love going with a group of people caroling uh, to different facilities here in Salina. That's really a lot of fun. When we think of the Christmas story itself, we often think of the version given in the book of Luke. The stillness that lay over the fields, the angel's message of good cheer to the shepherds watching their sheep, the clean, crisp air, and the guiding star which led the wise men to the baby Jesus. There's also the idea of royalty combined with the lowly and the humble and the highest kingship. Monarchs of the East came to bow before the tiny babe for whom the world had found no room in the end. With slow procession, the wise men advanced, bearing to the king of kings their symbolic gifts, gold for his crowning, incense for his worship, and myrrh for his physical mortality. But along with this story is gathered a great collection of traditions and customs that bring together in harmony the religious beliefs of many people from many nations. You know, but with everything that, that has been added to the Christmas story, when you stop to think of it, much of what we consider the Christmas story is make-believe. Although still about the birth of Jesus, we now have a charming blend of Germany's Saint Nicholas, whom we call Santa Claus, the Christmas tree, the burning of the Yule log in Europe, the great American Scrooge, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and the Grinch who stole Christmas. And I've got to add one more, the Charlie Brown Christmas. But even with all of these enrichments to the story, the greatest dimension of Christmas is still experienced when we realize that the Christmas story is our story. The drama of the birth of Christ happens within each of us. We tend to believe that Christ was born in a major 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. But actually, the original story about the birth of Christ was way before the advent of Jesus. And is recorded in the first, excuse me, the first book of the Bible, in Genesis 1.27. We read of this birth. So God created man in its own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. And unity teaches, we understand that the image of God, the pattern of perfection for humankind, or we call it the spiritual blueprint into which we are developing as spiritual beings, is this Christ, which existed when the world was born. Jesus became aware of this inner pattern of perfection and actualized it, becoming a full expression of it in and through his life. Thus Jesus became the Christ, the awakened one. He is our Savior, the Messiah, in the sense that Jesus blazed a trail of awareness back to God that you and I may follow. In fact, he does say, follow me, and the works that I do, you shall do also. The Gospel account in John brings the Christmas story right into the manger of our hearts. John speaks of the Christ as the true light that enlightens every person who comes into the world. The Apostle Paul echoes this with the affirmation, Christ in you is your hope of glory. Colossians 1.27 When the prophet Isaiah spoke in 9.6, he was speaking about all of us. Unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He was speaking about this presence which dwells in you and in me, and in every person who comes into the world. So, the great news is that the Christmas story is your story and my story, too. In Unity's metaphysical excuse me, metaphysical interpretation of the Christmas story. All the characters, Mary and Joseph, 
The inn, the manger, the wise men, the great star that led them, Herod, the shepherds, and the angels all represent qualities and experiences taking place within us. Many times we get so caught up in our jobs, our families, places to go, things that we've got to do, deadlines to meet. Or we fill our minds and hearts with fear, with worry, excuse me, with anxiety. And thus we leave no room in the inn of our mind. Our personal inn where thoughts gather and congregate. We leave no room to reflect upon the spiritual dimension of our lives. We figuratively put the Christ out in the cold. When we seek the inner Christ, our personal, individualized expression and experience of God, this presence is known and felt in our mind and in our hearts. The manger in a stable feeds God's creatures. The manger where the baby Jesus lay represents our hearts. The manger represents a kind of cradle for love. In us, the heart is where we go to experience God as the love that nourishes us, strengthens us, heals us, and prospers us. Generally, as characters, men in the Bible represent our intellect. Joseph, by marrying Mary, consented to be the human father for the baby child Jesus, committing to help Mary protect him, train him, guide, support, and raise him to adulthood. When we regularly give ourselves time for our practices of spiritual study, positive reading, prayer, meditation, contemplation, this is the Joseph in us, in our mind. It is our intellect supporting our spiritual growth. When we think of women in the Bible, we understand in unity that generally they represent our feeling nature, our inner knowing, our intu excuse me, intuition, our heart. Mary represents these things in us. Mary in us is our purest level of feeling called the intuition. And intuition is not a quality or a gift which only women have. It is a quality, a gift that we all have. Because we are all composites of masculine and feminine qualities. God made us that way. Genesis 1.27 tells us God created humankind in its image. So, as the elevated feeling nature in all of us, the intuition, our heart self, the Mary in us, becomes open and receptive to the things of spirit. Through our spiritual practices, we reach inward and we touch this Christ self, being born in our awareness. And then, having touched, felt, and experienced this Christ presence within, we stretch our soul outward, connecting the dots of divine love within us to our outer experience, into the world of our human nature. And this Christ self, which is divine love, moves through us and is born or established in our outer lives, in our experiences in the world. This is the true Christmas, and it occurs in us and through us throughout the year, not just on December 25th. When we practice staying open and receptive to the activity of God, that is listening, that is accepting that the will of God for us is good, seeming miracles can take place in us and in our world. Healing on all levels can take place in our physical bodies, our troubled relationships, in our finances, in our hopes and dreams for fulfillment, meaning, and purpose in service to God and each other in the world. All this and more is always being transformed in us when the Mary within each of us is receiving and conceiving the truth of our divine nature and oneness with God and giving birth to divine ideas which can take on the shape and form that we need to be manifest in our experiences. The angels in the Bible represent messengers of God. These are divine ideas which provide guidance and inspiration. These angels or divine ideas are heralds from God which always brings us news of the birth or the arrival of new possibilities, new opportunities to be blessed and ways that we may be a blessing to others. 
In the Christmas story, Herod wanted to get rid of the infant Jesus because he feared that his power and authority was going to be lost to the newborn king. We have a Herod in us too. Herod represents our human ego self, which seeks to control and rule over us. In fact, seeks to control everything about us. When we let the ego be in charge, it dominates our character, and it can become like Herod. Fearing change, fearing loss of its power, this ego, Herod self, prompts us to respond to life challenges with fear, with anger, with jealousy, with greed, with resentment. But we can't get rid of Herod. He is an important part of the story. We need our human ego to help us interface with the human side of our world. The ego is our outer face for the world, our personality. But you and I may choose to be wise men and women every day, placing our Herod self under the rule of our inner Christ self. We may choose to introduce the Herod in us to the love of God, and its heart will transform like the heart of the Grinch who stole Christmas when the Grinch became receptive to the love of the people who lived in Whoville. The great star which the wise men followed represents unlimited potential for good within each of us as children of God. And the wise men, well, those are the, are the ones who followed the star. We are wise when we choose to follow the call of spirit to maintain our inner connection by seeking the kingdom of God first in all things. Matthew 6.33 By our choosing to maintain an inner conscious communion with Christ, God's pattern of perfection, built and born into us, we are wise because we are staying connected to guidance, to divine love. And we receive all that is needed for a joyful, meaning, meaningful, excuse me, and fulfilling life. As wise ones, our gifts to the Christ are the ways that we choose to allow this Christ self to express in and through us in this world. We're all needed in this work of Christmas. We can all support the Christmas spirit wherever we are and in whatever situations we find ourselves. Not only with our monetary gifts, but the gifts of patience and support, understanding, kindness, and compassion. These are gifts that we can give with every card that we write, every phone call that we make, every visit we take, and every smile that we give to a loved one or a stranger. We can give these gifts to all creatures, great and small, knowing that the recipient is one of God's beloved and unique creations, just as we are. And now, I'm going to invite you to join me in our meditation, the Soul of Christmas Meditation. Christmas Eve seems to be a day fraught with the tension of anticipation. As adults, it can be too much for us, but for a child, it can be eagerly waiting for the possible, impossible to become real. A child waits with confidence in the possibilities of Christmas. By the time we become adults, we may be too cynical and have lost our confidence in possibilities. Adults read the Christmas story and we note that the inn had no room for the baby. We imagine the dusty stables where the animals were housed, the pain of labor and the hours of travel. And these all seem real. Yet who has not looked up into a sparkling night sky, awestruck by the infinite expanse of the countless lights? The life of Jesus demonstrates the ability to express and use the amazing spiritual gifts that are innate in all of us as we prepare for the renewal of Christ consciousness. We open ourselves to recognizing the gifts in each of us. And our key to fully embracing our gifts is to be like a child, simply accepting the gifts we have, the gifts we discover in ourselves and others without judgment. With childlike wonder, we can witness the beauty of our divinely 
expressed love and wisdom. Every day, not just Christmas, brings the opportunity for us to unwrap a new aspect of ourselves as we gently share the light that we have in our world. And so I'm going to invite you now to sit back where you're seated. I invite you to take several deep breaths. You might like to close your eyes as well to let this be the signal that you're turning your focus within, away from sights and sounds around you. Take several deep, re relaxing breaths. Sit back in your chair. Relax. Just let the chair or the couch or the bed, wherever you are, hold you up. Let the shoulders drop as you breathe and relax. And so we enter our meditation. The affirmation I would like you to speak to yourself silently is, I relax, release, and enjoy the wonder of this present moment. I relax, release, and enjoy the wonder of this present moment. Let quietness spread through your mind and your body as you feel this peacefulness. Let there be in you a readiness to be open to inspiration and upliftment as I speak the words of this guided meditation, which I'm calling the Soul of Christmas. I invite you to use the gift of your imagination now. And imagine that you are one of the shepherds in the Christmas story. You are out in the field under a star-filled sky watching over your sheep. It seems an unusually quiet night. No howling of wolves to be wary of, nor any sight of any deer roaming to disturb you. And the sheep who represent your human thoughts are peaceful and calm. In the quiet of this still night, the angels come to you singing beautiful sounds and bringing you the good news of the birth of a mighty expression of God's love. Imagine this. The angels coming to you. You thinking yourself a lowly shepherd. They are messengers of God, divine ideas, filled with wisdom and understanding for you. You are amazed at the wonder of the tidings of great joy that they bring, and you are excited to be invited by these angels to go see this babe who was born a king, a prince, the Messiah the hope of a better, happier, more fulfilling life. You yearn for the healing love, revitalizing and energizing your body and every situation you experience. You reach the manger and you are welcomed in by Mary, who represents your own sacred heart, and Joseph, who represents your intellect. These two represent your heart and your mind, open the way in you for you to see and experience the birth of the Christ Self within you. Your inner Mary and Joseph welcome you to this growing awareness of the light of God in you, the Christ. As you approach the baby, which represents the Christ in you, you feel the boundless love emanating from this child to you, and you cradle this feeling of love in your hands. And after a moment, in your mind, or physically if you choose, you raise your hands and you place your hands over your heart, allowing the great love to flow, touching the love that is already in your heart and fortifying it, strengthening and healing you. Let your heart breathe in this spiritual energy. Let it circulate, being carried by your blood to every part of your mental, emotional, physical, and psychic body. Stay with this holy experience in the silence, feeling the renewal, revitalization, the inner peace, love, and joy of this experience, of realizing that Christmas is happening in your soul and happens over and over in your soul. Breathe this in, the silence.
affirm for yourself the Christ is born in me. The Christ is born in me when I choose to give up anger and instead offer compassion and forgiveness to others and to myself. The Christ is born in me when I choose to give a hand to someone in need, when I choose to inspire someone, lift someone up in the ways that I can and share my light with them in the ways that only I can. See yourself, as Jesus said, being the light of the world right now. You are the candle. You are the Christ candle. And you are lit within by the love of God. See yourself radiant and moving about in your world. Being the blessing that you can be and that you are. Breathe in this awareness the soul of Christmas in your soul. And now as we return our awareness to this time and place, I invite you to take several deep breaths and open your eyes when you are ready and open your hearing to the sounds around you. And now if you have a candle that you would like to light, I invite you to do so now. The last Sunday in Advent candle. It is purple. And we'll watch this glow and imagine that there are a hundred people or more surrounding us, all with lighted candles. And we know that this glow is also within each of us. The Christ within. What a beautiful sight. We are the light of the world. And now I'm going to blow this candle out because we're going to speak, uh, sing a joy to the world as we end our service. <laughs> 